Let's play some music. everybody um turned off the music and uh uh welcome uh, i don't know if anybody's going to get here today um because now we're saying welcome to zoom canaan uh because we changed our name from zoom palestine um and now you have to put in a code to get in so that may make it more difficult for people um so we uh changed our name from zoom palestine to avoid using the dreaded P word uh, that got us in trouble. Uh, last week, uh, we were Zoom bombed, but we carry on. Um, and uh, we had an invasion of uh, very vicious, psychotic people um, attacking us, calling us all kinds of names, uh, um, very vulgar uh, and abusive um, and telling, uh, people that uh, the Goyim were going to be turned into Jewish slaves. So um, it, they, these were obviously disturbed people, but the intensity of their hatred for Palestine and for anybody who dares to criticize Israel uh, was truly frightening. Um, and it reveals the depth of the problem that we have um, when we talk about the Israeli-Palestine solution. Um, However, Frank Romano is still working on his uh, um, Palestine brief. And uh, we have um, a, uh, um, I'm gonna read um, to you uh, his, um, uh, what, what he sent me to describe what he's been doing. Um, and uh, uh, he says that, uh, uh, Frank Romano and other lawyers have filed separate criminal complaints with the ICC against Israeli officials for having committed war crimes against Palestinians. And that we saw uh, his presentation last week. What was interesting, um, and, and as a result, uh, Israel immediately contested jurisdiction of the court over the occupied Palestinian territories in Gaza. But the court recently granted jurisdiction so that the prosecutor can proceed with the case. This is an important game changer. And uh, as a result, uh, after our meeting, we noted that um, Netanyahu is attempting to pass a law forbidding anyone to cooperate with the ICC and is pressuring its allies to block the investigation. Their fear is evident after viewing what happened during our meeting last week in response to our presentation on Israeli war crimes, including the bombing of Gaza and the ICC decision. And here for the first time, we were Zoom bombed, viciously insulted, accused of anti-Semitism and warned that the Goyim will be Jewish slaves. And I did not edit anything out of the YouTube. So see for yourself, go to my YouTube channel uh, at Jacqueline 
uh, Casal Taylor Basker, and you'll see the uh, video for yourself, which should be quite um, revelatory and interesting for you. So um, I had hoped to get Tom Cox, who helped co-host and helped me kick people off of the um, meeting last week, frantically trying to, you know, get these people to stop interrupting us. Um, but he was too busy to show his art, and I'm hoping to get him on a future time. He's a, a wonderful artist and also fearless leader of the uh, Brooklyn for Peace group, which is an amazing group. Um, I don't think you have to live in Brooklyn to join it, and I've joined it, although I live in Manhattan, because they are truly uh, activists in the in the pure sense of the word. They are uh, constantly uh, looking at issues. Uh, most recently, we've been uh, looking at the issue of Ethiopia, where Israel has actually been uh, involved in selling arms for Ethiopia for years, and the uh, condition of the Tigray people. <clears throat> um, one of the members is uh, from uh, Ethiopian Tigray background and has had family members that have disappeared and um, the situation is horrific. So um, Brooklyn for Peace, I uh, hope Tom uh, and some Brooklyn for Peace people can come on and talk to us in a, in a future meeting because um, it's wonderful to realize that um, in the middle of all the troubles we see, that they really are dedicated people working tirelessly um, and continually uh, to um, bring these injustices to the attention of the world and to change what's going on. So uh, today um, I'm going to be uh, presenta presenting a video uh, called um, Endangered, Endangered Land, People and Heritage. And this was the um, subject of uh, an exhibit that I had uh, that um, chronicled my artwork in Jordan beginning in, 19, in 2007 um, when I first arrived in Jordan and then uh, painfully be was made aware of the Palestinian situation and the injustices made aware by my, both my students many of whom who came from Palestinian backgrounds who still have the keys to their houses, and also from uh, many visits uh, across the uh, King Hussein Bridge into uh, Jerusalem, Palestine, and Israel. Um, and so this ex exhibit is a retrospective of my art response, uh, also to the bombing of Gaza that I watched painfully on Al Jazeera television uh, and was in deep shock from what I saw, so I did some series of paintings on them. Uh, and uh, and it, it, it also included an installation of my artwork about the flotilla, the Mavi Mamara. And I hope to do a full um, program on it some eventually, but this would be a taste of it. The Mavi Mamara, for those of you who don't remember, 10 years ago, actually, um, 2011, was a flotilla, an aid flotilla, international people from all over the world to uh, bring supplies to Gaza that had been blocked by Israel's blockade, most of which were medical supplies, um, construction supplies, medical supplies. And it was full of volunteers uh, from all over the world, but as, uh, uh, many from Turkey where the flotilla left. And um, unfortunately, uh, although it was in international waters uh, off Gaza, uh, should not have should not have been touched. Israel invaded it and um, killed ten people. Nine were killed almost uh, immediately on ship. One went into a, a coma for four years and died uh, four years later. So I did a large art installation with a story based on the story of each uh, of the people of each of the martyrs who uh, lost their lives trying to do good for humanity. So um, my film uh, uh, is about a half hour long. And if anybody shows up, you're welcome to uh, ask questions. Um, but I think uh, it's uh, pretty explanatory. And it's kind of a uh, shows you also um, what uh, life is like in Jordan and uh, how many wonderful people I had in my life uh, while I was in Jordan. So enjoy. Endangered land, people, heritage, 
paintings by J. Taylor Vasker at an exhibit opened by the mayor of Amman, Dr. Yusuf Ashawarba at Andak Gallery in Amman, Jordan, August 2017. The Land. Welcome to Jordan, Acrylic Collage, 2007. My first painting in Jordan responded to the warm greetings I received after arriving here. Welcome to Jordan was a constant mantra from all whom I met. I toured major heritage sites and discovered the beauty and diversity of its geography and its rich history. I also became aware of the many clouds of conflict surrounding Jordan, endangering its land from all its borders that had become worse each year after arriving in 2007. This acrylic collage painting, one and a half meters square, called Walking Through Jordan Looking for Water, reflects on the struggle for water in Jordan, who loses much of its water to Israel and Syria and is affected by climate change and drought. The influx of refugees has pushed this problem to a critical point. I painted this during the International Symposium of Artists organized by Hilda Hiati and the Ministry of Culture in 2009. My fellow artists printed their feet on the canvas, including the noted Jordanian artist Suhel Salim Akin. This painting is called Waiting at the Border, acrylic collage, 33 centimeters by 40 centimeters. I painted it in 2008 after my first trip across the border uh, to go to Jerusalem. Many Jordanians visit their families in Jerusalem and Palestine. I have often observed the long lines and great difficulties they endure when they try to cross the border at the King Hussein Allenby Bridge. I took photos of them and used them in my paintings. Once I was interrogated for seven hours trying to cross. On the same day, Noah Chomsky also collaged into the painting, was detained and then turned away. But I got through finally. Now they have segregated the Palestinians and Jordanians from the other internationals in the terminal. So we can't see how the Palestinians are treated. The settlements wall and towers are shown above. An IDF soldier pointing a gun at a young boy is at the bottom. This acrylic collage painting is called Women in Gaza Shop Till You Drop. It was done in 2008 and it celebrated the courage of the women of Gaza who got sick and tired of not having diapers, wedding gowns, mattresses, clothing and food for their children due to the Israeli blockade. One day at the Rafa border with Egypt, the women climbed over the fence to shop. The Egyptian soldiers as Muslims were reluctant to touch the women. The fence was breached for nearly a week as the women and men shocked. Finally, it was repaired and the border closed again. Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People is collaged at the top, along with Mary, Miriam, and St. George protecting them. I became increasingly interested in the plight of Palestine through friendships with Jordanians from Palestinian backgrounds as my artist friend Samia Zaru, who celebrates her Palestinian heritage, both in her art and in her dress. Isan Bandak, the director of the gallery, comes from a distinguished family from Bethlehem, a city that's being surrounded by illegal settlements. Here he is with my friend, Alan David, who also comes from Palestinian background. And Ahmed Alzuni, my colleague and good friend, uh, is here with me. And his father, the noted journalist, has been forbidden to write in Jordan 
because of articles he's written critical of Israel. The exhibit was quite successful with many wonderful people coming, including my good friend, the Brazilian ambassador, Francisco Carlos Juarez Luz, as well as the mayor of Amman and the Turkish ambassador, who was very interested in my painting about the Mavi Mamara. The Mavi Mamar was a flotilla that attempted to bring medical supplies from Turkey to beleaguered Gaza, who had been attacked repeatedly by Israel in several wars. I created these paintings from collage photos and newspaper headlines about the bombings in Gaza. I could hear the horrific sounds of bombs from the home of Nomika Zion, founder of the group Other Voices, an anti-war Israeli group whom we visited in Cedarot on the international peace bus trip to Gaza organized by the ex-IDF soldiers breaking the silence. We had to discontinue our trip since the truce ended and the bombing began again. But I painted these pictures, uh, including uh, scenes of bombing, destruction, white phosphorus in Gaza. After returning from the peace bus to Gaza, um, getting tear gassed and skunk watered on the Mount of Olives, um, I painted this acrylic collage on a canvas that I had begun a horizontal cloud painting. But when I turned it vertically, an angel appeared. I then completed the painting, adding collage photos of suffering Gaza children and families during the bombings. The events in Gaza affected many of us in Jordan since so many people have roots in Palestine. So I did an installation as a memorial to the men killed by the Israeli Defense Forces on the Mavi Namara that was sailing to Gaza with supplies in 2011. Nine volunteers were shot dead on the boat. One later died after being in a coma. The Mavi Mamara uh, held around 600 of the flotilla's 700 passengers. Most were recruited from Turkey and Arab countries, but dozens of Americans and Europeans were aboard, including Holocaust survivors, lawmakers, and an Arab member of Israeli's parliament. These unarmed activists included women, children, priests, writers, artists, and journalists. The experience was profoundly shocking for them. Uh, one author wrote that Israel behaved like pirates since the whole action was illegal. Their stories prodded the global community to question the legitimacy of Israeli military actions and began a shift of world opinion. My first portrait was of the youngest volunteer killed on Mavi Mamara, the 19-year-old Furkan Dogan, who had dual American-Turkish citizenship. While researching a photo from TV news that showed him at the moment he was shot, I lightened it to see his figure more clearly, and the, suddenly a large bearded face appeared. Was it a prophet, Muhammad, Moses, Jesus? I then decided to research and paint all of the martyrs. He was shot five times from less than 45 centimeters in the face, in the back of the head, twice in the leg, and once in the back. He was a student in a Turkish high school, wanted to become a doctor. Born in New York, his father was an associate professor at a university. Sevdad Kiligar was a journalist and web editor for the IHH charity that organized the Freedom Flotilla. He was the technical coordinator of the press room on the ship. He was an experienced humanitarian aid worker and killed by a single bullet that hit him between the eyebrows on his forehead. Born in Kayersi, he studied media and communications at Memar University, obtained his master's degree in Germany, worked for newspapers in Turkey, and married with two children, traveled much as a volunteer documenting the needs of the countries in the region and the charity work of the foundation. Witnesses reported that he ran to the upper deck saying, we should not let this go unrecorded. He was shot in the forehead while recording the attack with his camera. However, his efforts were not in vain. A Greek activist on board noted 
that despite the electronic attack and transmission blackout by the Israeli Navy, um, he was able to send pictures until about a half an hour after the attack. A rarely used type of bullet penetrated his forehead and remained inside his skull without scattering. Forensic scientists report that the specific type of bullet is used in certain shotguns that are mainly employed by the military for ballistic breaching of doors and crowd control. This, quote, beanbag round is only fatal if shot to the head where Sebdek was hit. The oldest volunteer on the ship was 62-year-old Ibrahim Bilgin. Uh, he came from Southeast Anatolia and wanted to donate his services to Gaza uh, because he was a skilled electrician and plumber. And he thought his expertise could help them uh, in Gaza that didn't have electricity and water. And he wanted to provide humanitarian aid um, so people could uh, have a normal life. He used to give free plumbing services to those who could not afford them, telling them just their prayers would suffice. He was shot four times. The autopsy discovered a tiny bag containing pellets still intact in his brain, which the report said was fired from a hunting rifle that was not a type of weapon the doctors had ever heard of. Three bullet wounds were also found in Bilgin's chest, back, and hip. Ali Haydar Bengi uh, came from Diyarbakir, Turkey, and pursued a career of scholarship, graduating from the Faculty of Islam and Arabic Language Studies, and stressed the need for religious understanding uh, between all people and the importance of achieving unity among Muslims. His good nature made him a popular community leader, and he directed an association for rights, freedoms, culture. He thought he could be useful for translating and communication on the flotilla. He was married and had four children, and he felt it was important to provide humanitarian aid to the Palestinians as part of the global community. He was shot six times in his chest, left leg, right leg, twice in his left hand, and once in the abdomen. Nektik Yildirim, 32 years old, worked at the pharmacy unit of the IHH Humanitarian Relief, Relief Foundation. His cheerful, calm, and compassionate personality made him much loved by his co-workers and friends. He was married with one daughter. When the Flotilla to Gaza project was formed, he eagerly volunteered to participate in the convoy, des convoy designed to break the Gaza embargo. When the Israelis began shooting and injuring passengers, Nektik climbed to the upper deck to help rescue the wounded. Uh, he was killed in cold blood, according to some passenger witnesses. Israel claimed that its troops were attacked by the passengers, but there was, as soon as the Israeli Defense Force helicopter appeared, uh, people and immediately put a white flag up for the passengers, but the Israelis continued firing. And one observer wrote, I think the Israeli soldiers were shooting to kill because most of the people who died were shot in the top part of their bodies. However, later the strategy changed uh, after a tactical decision by the commandos to wound rather than to kill. Setin Tokuoglu was a gifted athlete who was both a world champion of Taekwondo and an award-winning referee and coach. He worked as a public worker and his entire life was dedicated to humanitarian activities. He was an advocate for the disadvantaged and abused. He and his wife worked with youth and cultural educational organizations. And they volunteered for years with the IHH humanitarian or aid organization. He had the discipline and determination of an athlete when focused on causes. And he, uh, asked what they could offer for the flotilla. He said, as much as we can. He and his wife offered all their abilities to show solidarity with Palestinians. He was shot in the back of his head, on his left side and his right belly. Sengiz Akul, 41, was married with two daughters and a son. He was an interior decorator and builder and also a talented musician. His congenial and generous personality made him very popular.
He was an excellent joke teller. He loved to swim, play chess, and care for children, and always wanted to help people in need. He was a dynamic, charitable, positive man. He always would offer a cheerful, smiling face, and he told his friends every morning, if your bag is full, if you are full of love, joy, hope, and peace, let's leave it and share it with people. He was a skilled craftsman who wrote on his application form for the flotilla that he could help with construction work. He especially wanted to help deliver materials for the hospital and the homeless in Gaza. He used to play his bendier at many weddings and funerals. And he, um, after he left, he told his friend, now you may write a song of martyrdom after me. He, um, before he boarded the ship, his last words to his wife were take good care of the children, make them focus on education and praying. He was shot four times in the back of his head, the right side of his face, his back and his left leg. Fahudrid Yaldiz, at 43, personally remembered the pain of being an orphan and had deep sympathy for the children of Gaza that lost their parents. That's why he joined the flotilla to bring them aid. After losing his father when he was young, he had to go to work to support his family at a young age. He was a skilled electrician and had search and rescue experience as a firefighter. He also owned a small sweet shop where he raised money for his charitable work. He organized fundraising for the flotilla beforehand and volunteered his electrical skills, search and rescue experience, and professional firefighting expertise for Gaza. Before he left, he hugged his mother and family and friends and asked them to pray for him. He left behind four sons. He was shot with five bullets, two to his left leg, two to his right, and a fatal one to his chest. A Swedish volunteer, along with his wife, um, described the Israeli actions as, quote, a military attack on a humanitarian aid operation in, out in international waters. They charged that it was a very surprising and aggressive overreaction by Israel. Sengiz Songur was from Konya, Turkey, and when he told his family he would go on the Mavi Mamar to bring humanitarian aid to Gaza, one of his daughters put a note in his pocket that he did not notice until he was on the ship. When he found it to the letter, he showed it proudly to his fellow passengers. He owned a small textile shop and was the father of seven children. His daughter wrote, I have thousands of words to tell you, but they are now all stuck in my throat. I am scared, Daddy. I get scared as I see the sadness in my sister's eyes and worried look on my mom's face. Daddy, please do not get scared. Please go there. Go there to put a smile on an orphan's face. Go there to receive good wishes from a mother. Go there even if you won't be able to return. It is wonderful to be your daughter. I am so proud of you, Dad. He's a man who cared deeply about families and had spent most of his life trying to help other families in need and charities around the world from London to Somalia, Haiti to Sierra Leone. He was an avid reader and collected novels as well as encyclopedias and atlases. He was shot once in the neck. When his daughters heard of his death, they wrote, Israel, you should be afraid. This time, Abigail birds are on their way swimming through the sea. Abigail birds are described in the Quran sent by Allah to drop bricks on the elephants of an invading army attacking the city of Mecca. She concluded, I am now sure that you are free, Dad. We are free. Gaza is free. Ugur Suleiman Solimez, 51, died after being in a coma for four years that he suffered extreme head injuries, traumatic head injuries from his brain being smashed. Uh, he, he, he was discharged from the hospital and his family took care of him for four years while he was in a coma. Uh, in the Israeli newspapers, when they reported his death, stated that there were no humanitarian aid found on the ship and that the passengers had attacked the Israeli soldiers, all of which is a blatant lie. 
verified by uh, hundreds of witnesses. Much endangered also is the heritage of Jordan. In 2013, I presented a lecture PowerPoint at the World Archaeological Congress held in the Dead Sea on the top 10 endangered archaeological sites in Jordan. Dr. Adib Abu Shamals of Friends of Archaeology collaborated with me, suggesting the 10 endangered sites. I curated an exhibit on endangered archaeology for the conference and painted this piece with a collage of each site for the exhibit showing um, uh, the sites and explaining the dangers. Ironically, this painting was vandalized like its subject matter, but has been restored and subsequently sold to the mayor of Amman. These include a Byzantine wine and oil press being offered for real estate development uh, in Abdun, a uh, wealthy suburb in Amman. A uh, Ein Ghazal, which is the site of the first city uh, of humanity in Amman, where a highway has been built through it. Uh, the Umayyad Desert Castle and Palace, Al Kastal, uh, which is being dug up by people looking for gold. The Citadel uh, site of the uh, murder of David's rival husband uh, to his lover Bathsheba, uh, the highest point in Amman, the capital of the ancient Ammonites. Uh, that has a Byzantine mosaic covered by a, a parking lot. This project was actually paid for by USAID. The Damia Dolmen Fields, where the earliest Neolithic dolmen, dolmens that predate Stonehenge are uh, being des destroyed by mining and development. Uh, Wadi Sir Mahbara al Bahav that has a Byzantine and Umayyad factory and winery being uh, used as a garbage dump. The Jelat Dam that's being dug out uh, uh, by people looking for gold, a, a well-known uh, Umayyad site uh, on the site of Roman and Byzantine construction. The Musha Cistern, uh, the famous well on the archeological ruins of Umayyad Palace is being uh, destroyed um, by poachers and gold hunters. And Abila, or ancient Rapana, the ancient uh, Roman city, uh, is also uh, open for pillage, pillaging by vandals. And most sadly, Umar Asas, the site of the best mosaics in Jordan that are uh, is not well kept up and vandalized. Despite receiving millions of euros as a World Heritage Site, the uh, site is still poorly developed and poorly marked. And when an ambassador friend of mine visited there, he was not able to find the famous mosaics in the Church of St. Stephen because of poor signage and nobody to direct you. As a result, I was inspired to paint my series on ruins and this is Kassar Halabat, one of the great desert castles. This is a large painting, acrylic on canvas, one meter by one and a half meters, I did in 2015. These desert castles are amongst Jordan's greatest monuments, as well as the most endangered. Lack of funds in public education, as well as all the rumors of gold buried in them, has placed them at great risk. This valuable heritage is endangered not only for Jordan, but a loss for the entire world. When I returned to New York City, I missed the uh, ruins of Jordan. So I painted a series of small pictures of the uh, sites that I love so much in Jordan. This is another picture from Kassar Halabat. Omar Asas is one of the most important archeological sites in Jordan. Here's my painting of the remains of one of the 300 churches located there uh, after earthquake destruction. It's located near Madaba, and it was extremely important for the history of the past when the Muslims, Christians, and Jews lived together in harmony. 
They all live together in community here. Uh, and the site goes back to pre-Roman times. It's still mostly unexcavated. However, um, poor maintenance and security continue to endanger the heritage, despite it being declared a World Heritage Site. This is my painting of one of the dolmen fields, acrylic on canvas, one meter by 1.2 meters. Um, these vast prehistoric dolmen fields in Jordan are mostly unknown and unexplored, although their archaeological significance is great. And they tell the amazing story of Jordan, but are much endangered from development. They were also the home to the earliest human Neolithic city in Ein Gazal, and they predate Stonehenge. In 2010, the Department of Antiquities created the Damia Dolmen Archaeological Park to protect the dolmens, uh, over 200 of them in Jordan. The World Monuments Watch lists them as disappearing at an alarming rate. I was commissioned by the well-known artist Kaldun Daoud of uh, Fuhais to do a painting of the famous Dilmun burial mounds in Bahrain. Uh, the painting was exhibited in Bahrain and is going to be published in a book on the ancient Dilmun culture to help preserve this important but disappearing heritage. It's quite large, uh, two and a half meters by one and a half meter acrylic on canvas. I was very interested in the shared sacred sites between Muslims and Christians. And this is my imagined painting of the cave of the seven sleepers, uh, where there are several sites in Jordan for these, this legend of uh, seven young men who were being persecuted for their faith uh they were as christians and they hid in a cave with their dog and when they woke up it was a hundred years later this is the second painting i did of the subject which is in the uh, royal collection of art of king abdullah in jordan i had help from friends to get this exhibit at the last minute together especially joy belmonte who helped me repair my damaged painting of the top 10 endangered archaeological sites in Jordan. Next, my good friends and neighbors, Sudanese refugees who uh, were my good Samaritans and had uh, rescued me when I was mugged uh, the year before in Jordan and uh, I became close friends with them. They're affiliated with the Jesuit Center as teachers and students. And uh, they helped me move all my paintings from the house to the gallery. And my girl team helped me uh, get to the exhibit, uh, did my hair, my makeup, and uh, gave me moral support <laughs> to get to the exhibit. We were truly an international group. Me, an American, a Filipino, Joy, Filipino, Danusha from Sri Lanka, and the wonderful Sudanese assistant from Isan Bandak's gallery. Much gratitude and thanks to everyone. Hey, hi, Fareed, you're here. So, uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Fadid, do you have any questions? All right. Well, anyhow, I'm glad Fadid was here, uh, even though we can't talk to him. Um, and I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, I have to update it. Um, and, uh, you know, as new things keep going on. Um, but I feel, I feel a little hopeful. Um, Biden is talking about renewing the... Um, uh, deal with Iran. Um, I think that um, while he's very pro-Israel, of course, because he has to get elected, that uh, he has a history. Hey, Fadi. Uh, hey. Unmute yourself. Hey, hi. Hi. How are you?
Hi. I'm good. I'm good. 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 I love your stuff. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just talking about, you know, I'm feeling a little hopeful. I'm not sure why. Um, uh, but um, uh, I, I feel that the, that Israel's reaction to the ICC uh, shows that it's really uh, freaking out. Um, and uh, um, the, did you see that? Um, I sent you an email about that uh, Israeli socialist group. And it. Yes, it's wonderful. I love it. I watched it. Yeah. I listened to it. Yeah. into it yeah fascinating uh that the uh palestinians and the israelis on the left were all united in the 60s um and i think what yes. his point of view is that really the only way to get rid of zionism is for the uh socialist movement in israel the working classes the, the people in israel who are working in shit jobs um uh wake up and realize that their interest is not in maintaining a Zionist state, but it is interested in uniting with the Palestinians for, for their rights. So I think um, that was, and I know there's been mass demonstrations in Tel Aviv uh, going on for a, a couple of years of people protesting against the government. So I feel a sense of hope that actually now um, maybe things might start to turn around. What do you think, Fadi? Uh I just want to say about there's a there was a very healthy peace now movement uh, in the 80s and 70s and I think there is hope and you being part of it is hope Frank Romano being part of it is hope uh, there is a there was a huge a good percentage of people on the left supporting the Palestinian movement and also supporting a one state solution where all everybody should be in the same boat, where they have the rights. So Peace Now movement and watching the blog of the 60s uh, is very hopeful. You're hopeful. Yeah. I believe in you. I, uh, I was very saddened by watching the, the, the Zoom of Frank Romano and the ICC, but it's a start of something good. Yeah, and yeah. I, I know I got involved. Go ahead. I think the fact that we got such an extreme reaction in a way is positive. We hit a nerve. We hit a good nerve. We hit a nerve, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we hit a good nerve. Keep up the good work. So, uh, um, you know, uh, um, I was kind of freaked out to be honest <laughs> for a while after that, but uh, then I recovered and I realized that um, that, that this is all good, you know, um, and uh, we just hope. have to. Keep at there it. is hope. Keep at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, any ideas or suggestions anybody has uh, in how we can uh, keep the pressure on um, is very important, and and that's it. We just have to keep the pressure on. Um, if we let up, that's a mistake. Uh, just to to keep at it. Um, and I think one of the things that I loved in that video uh, that uh, I that. Uh, Tom Cox uh, sent me uh, this great story. Um, it was, uh, uh, what was the name of the group? Um, Mazdan, uh, the, um, uh, how, how do you pronounce that name of the group? Do you remember the name of the group? How it was pronounced? That's but but Yeah, uh, that um, the guy said, and I've been saying this for ages, that, that Israeli uh, crimes is just going to increase anti-Semitism. When they claim that all Jews in the world are part of the Israeli agenda, you know, um, and that if you're a Jew who objects, you're a self-hating Jew, okay? Um, that um, this in itself will engender anti-Semitism. Uh, and I've been saying this for years, uh, for, for a long time, and I was very happy to hear this Israeli guys say the same thing. Um, and um, I, I, I think that Jews around the world are, are waking up, but they're afraid, a lot of them are afraid to open their mouths because they're so viciously attacked by their fellow Jews 
Um, but this is nothing new in history. You know, Jews have been at each other's throats since uh, the beginning. You know, <laughs> read the prophets. Uh, and uh, certainly the Maccabees were busy, uh, you know, there was a civil war, basically. The Maccabee whole thing was basically a civil war between the Jews. So, you know, the dissension amongst Jews is nothing new. And this idea that there's this monolithic Jewish opinion, a monolithic Jewish presence is, is very false from history. And uh, so I think I, I, I want to try to get somebody, um, you know, from like Breaking the Silence or uh, Beth Salam, uh, some group to show them support because I'm sure it must be very depressing for them to be under attack all the time in Israel. I can invite for you some speakers from Break the Silence. Who's I was with them in Virginia yeah. and I met two of them and they're wonderful. Micha is one of them and another one who is an Iraqi soldier who is Israeli and they speak about what they did or what they did in, in Lebanon and other places. Wow, and I can cool. link you with that yeah, in the let's, future. Let's try to get that. Let's try to get that together. I think that would be great. Um, so I uh, can do that for you. All right. Thanks, Fadid. Um, House of Snow in Jersey. Okay, I guess he's gone. Okay, so uh, um, peace to everybody. Uh, uh, peace, uh, shalom, salam. And uh, I don't have my candle to light, but I am sending you out as lights to the world um, in uh, bringing love and justice and peace um, and truth. I think that, that um, you know, you have to speak truth that people don't like to hear it. But uh, one of the purposes of this program is to bring out truth, to bring out facts and as uncomfortable as they may be that people have to uh, keep, can't keep hiding from it, but they have to realize what's going on. So goodbye, Freddie, and I'll see you next week. Have a good Thank week. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye all. Thank you, you too, bye -bye. Jackie. Thank you. Bye, North Okay, bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye.